This video will discuss the proper usage and calibration of infant scales. This video was produced as an educational project and is not intended to provide expert information. Always consult manufacturer's information and qualified professionals before attempting to service your biomedical equipment. Always follow safety warnings. This video will familiarize you with analog or non-electronic infant scales. Your infant scale may be different from the one presented here. We will demonstrate the indications for using an infant scale, proper terminology for the parts of an infant scale, how to calibrate an infant scale, performing a weighing using the infant scale, properly transporting the scale, and potential problems and safety to consider when using. We will demonstrate using the Sika Mechanical Infant Scale. This scale and other similar infant scales are used to weigh babies at birth and to track their weight as they grow. All mechanical infant scales, scales that do not use electricity, work by comparing an unknown weight, such as an infant, to a known weight using a lever on top of a pivot. The weight of the unknown object is determined by the operator adjusting the location of sliding weights of a known weight in order to perfectly balance the lever. When the lever is balanced, the position of the sliding weight will indicate the baby's weight. The basic parts of an infant scale are the following. The basket used to place the infant in when weighing. The basket is curved or has protection to prevent the infant from falling out of the device and being injured. Most infant scales will have two known weights that are used for performing a weighing. The large sliding weight and the small sliding weight. Both of these weights are able to slide along a metal beam in order to adjust the level of the beam balance. The beam balance moves up and down and shows whether the position of the sliding weights match the baby's weight. When the beam is high, the baby is heavier than the sliding weights show. When the beam is low, the baby is lighter than the sliding weights show. When the effect of the unknown infant weight and sliding weights match, the beam balance will be horizontal and the pointer and counter pointer level. Lastly, the entire infant scale must be level in order to accurately weigh the infant. The level of the infant scale can be determined by a level indicator if present. The scale is level when the air bubble lies entirely within the circle or lines. If your scale does not have a level built in, an external level can be placed inside the weighing basket to ensure the scale is leveled. We will now discuss calibrating the infant scale. Before the scale is used for weighing, it must be calibrated to ensure that the measurement of the baby is accurate. A scale is properly calibrated when the beam balance is level with no weight present on the weighing tray, or in other words, when the pointer and the counter pointer are aligned with each other without any weight on the scale. If the balance beam is not level without any weight present in the basket, move the tear weight by unscrewing it and sliding it back and forth until the beam balance is level. When the beam balance is level, indicated by the pointer and counter pointer being aligned, screw the tear weight back into place so it does not move. The scale is now calibrated and can be used for weighing. We will now demonstrate how to properly determine the weight of an unknown object. To perform a weighing procedure, two weights are used to level the beam balance, the small weight and the large weight. The large weight can be slid across the metal railing and held in place at discrete locations along the rail by slots in the railing. To measure an unknown mass, begin by first making sure the scale is level. Once the scale is level, ensure that both the large and the small weights are in their zero location on the railings. Next, 
place an unknown mass in the weighing basket. The beam balance should be in the elevated position when the unknown weight is placed in the basket. To level the beam balance, begin by slowly sliding the large weight to higher and higher increments. The large weight should be slid to the highest possible position until the beam balance falls. Leave the large weight at the position just before the beam balance falls. Next, slowly move the small sliding weight to higher slots. Notice how the beam balance begins to slowly level out. Continue moving the small sliding weight until the beam balance is fully level and stays level. The weight of the unknown object can now be determined as the sum of the numbers that both the large and the small weight have been placed at. For example, the weight of this object is 2 kilograms plus 350 grams, which is 2.35 kilograms. To double check that the scale is calibrated, a known mass can be placed in the weighing basket and weighed using the previously described procedure. A bottle of room temperature water can be used as a known weight if no known weights are available. Each liter of water weighs one kilogram. If available, fill a small container of water with three or four liters and place it on the infant scale. Three liters of water should weigh approximately three kilograms. Four liters of water should weigh four kilograms. Weigh the water. Note that the mass of the container the water is in may lead to an incorrect weight measurement. If possible, use known volumes of water placed in a container of known weight or place the known volume of water in very thin walled and light containers. The weight of the water should be accurate within 100 grams. If not, recalibrate the weight using calibration protocol described previously. To transport the scale as a single unit, ensure that the tray is securely attached to the bottom half of the scale system by locking the side latches in place. In addition, activate the transport lock to ensure the beam is not damaged during transport. Consider using a rubber band to lock the sliding weights to the tear weight during transportation to prevent damage or sliding of the weights. It is recommended to clean the scale with a sanitary wipe prior to transport and prior to each use. Lift the scale from beneath with two hands and transport to the desired location, ensuring that the scale is set back on a level surface free of external obstructions. Unlock the transport locks and remove the rubber band securing the weights to begin using the scale again. Calibration may be required prior to using the scale in the new location. We will now discuss the problems that may arise when using the infant scale. If you have placed the item to be weighed on the scale and the beam does not move from its initial position, there may be a problem with the way that the scale is set up. Make sure that the transport locks have been released and are not blocking the beam from moving up and down. Additionally, make sure that the basket has been properly secured using the side latches and make sure that there are no obstructions around the scale that may be preventing movement of the beam. If the beam does change position when the item to be weighed is placed on the scales, but the scale is not reading the correct values, there are several potential issues with the scale. First, check the scale is properly calibrated using the tear weight. If the tear weight is not in the correct location, the scale readout will be off by a constant amount for each measurement, which could be the source of the weight problem. Make sure your scale is level and that there is no contact between the beam and the wall. Any external obstruction to the scale can potentially skew the weight measurement. If the readout problem persists, consider testing known weight values to determine how different the measurement is compared to the actual value. If the scale consistently reads a value of X grams above or below the actual weight, you can alter the tear weight to counteract this weight offset. Finally, 
In addition to the information described here, always attempt to consult a service manual specific to your infant scale before using or repairing. This concludes this instructional video. Thank you for watching.